Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and we are finally at the end of our Voyager window launches. I told you there were going to be a lot more launches during this Voyager window than there were during the actual one and boy was that right. So all we have left is MAPSAT 2A and this Ambassador mission and I think we should prioritize the Ambassador mission. Technically according to Kerbal Transfer, uh, Transfer Window Planner uh, we still have five days until this optimal transfer to Jupiter, but we really don't want an optimal transfer to Jupiter per se. What we really want is an optimal transfer to the outer planets for the ambassador. So yeah, we'll do that first, and then MassAt 2A will probably end up around Jupiter, so having that uh, transfer window for that particular mission is probably the best. And then after that, we want to resupply our spaceport around Earth, and we have vessels ready, already built for that. And eventually we might want to do a crew rotation, so we are building those. But we, I think, want to plan bigger and better things, like a moon base. And we've got new technologies while we've been handling all these missions. So we'll take a look at those probably in the next episode. So let's just get this done, and we will roll out this ambassador mission. Alright, so here we are with our ambassador mission, and throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. And launch. So this is the third ambassador mission. One of them is on its way to Pluto. We do have two flyby missions in addition to that. We've got the Neptune flyby, and I think we have a Uranus flyby. Or maybe not. Uh, yes, we do. So these are all sort of backups for one another. Well, we've got one mission that's headed out in theory to Uranus and Neptune, but this will back that one up. Okay, looking good. And booster set. Alright, everything is fine at 25 kilometers. Alright, we're at the end of the core stage here. And separation. And ignition. And we have RJ2. I'll. I, uh, the fairings. Oh, they are pretty big. Okay. I was wondering how far they actually extended. I uh, will wait until we're in space. Okay, fairing separation. All right. Okay, we are finally finishing up orbit here with the J2. Might need a couple of degrees up pitch there, but not much. We're going to be in a decently tight orbit, so that's nice. And shut down. 203 by 171. And let's plot for Jupiter first, but we want to plot with uh, the other planets in mind. Okay, well it looks like Saturn is no longer in a particularly good position to help us out, so we're going straight to Uranus, and we're going to encounter it in 11 years. Every attempt to fly by Saturn as well seemed to lead us to have some weird trajectory uh, that uh, we would meet up with Uranus in 62 years on the other side, but that's not really what we want to do at all. Uh, so this is probably for the best, especially since there's probably a time limit on the contract anyway. So we, we'll encounter Uranus in 11 years or so, and hopefully proceed on to Neptune. We'll have to see. We can't really plot that out right now. The best it can handle is Jupiter to Uranus right now. All right, so that is the plan. And it'll be, it has to be a close flyby of Uranus. So we, you know, that gives us only a little bit of leeway to attempt to hit Neptune right now. Once we get past Jupiter, it'll be easier to fine-tune the approach to Uranus to hit Neptune as well. Alright, so that is the idea, and we should get communications and everything set up before we start our burn. So, targeting Earth somewhere. Lot, these, these, these are all our interplanetary missions. See, this is all in orbit around the Sun right now. Uh, and then only after... Uh, some of these are, of course, leftovers. But, yeah, there's Earth. Alright. 
I guess it's uh, worth a brief check at the map to see what it looks like. Um, we've, we've got all sorts of stuff turned off. But right now we've got, let's focus let's focus on the sun. Oh, we lost communication temporarily. Um, this is basically our mission paths. You can see pretty thick web down here at Earth's Earth orbit here. Of course, all the recent missions that we launched are still bunched up around here close to Earth, right? They haven't gotten very far so far. So they're all here. Well, it's a bit of a conundrum since this is clearly not reading our stages properly at all. There's no way we still have seven minutes in this stage, for instance. And probably we should have a little bit more Delta V in that stage. Uh, though we do have boil off. I wonder if it would be more efficient to pump this liquid hydrogen up here. Yeah, I guess so. Top the Centaur stage off. Okay, well now it reads seven minutes in that stage. I don't know. this. I don't think the J2 has seven minutes to it. But perhaps we should get started now. So, uh, let's check. Uh, very stable, it says. We're close to apoapsis, so that's good. We won't dip back into the atmosphere, even though we're starting so early. All right, ignition. Okay, staging. And we have two RL-10s lit on the Centaur stage. Okay, well, we're pretty much exactly on it. It was an 8,000 meter per second burn, and even though this bar seems to always give me trouble, it always seems like it's more than halfway through when it's halfway through the number. But anyway, uh, we are halfway through right at the node, so it looks good as far as our accuracy on the burn timing. But of course, there's all sorts of complications like we're, we're now going away from Earth at extremely high velocity, <laughs> and uh, we're not going to be as optimal as we would like the longer this goes on. And we are soon going to need to switch to this asterisk stage, which will take a while. Okay, set, and ignition. Yeah, this is going to take a while. Well, obviously, crashing into Jupiter is not part of the plan. So let's back off here. All right, we have to get rather close to Jupiter. It's a 21,000 kilometer pass, but that will get us our encounter with Uranus, according to this, with a 117.7 meter per second burn in three minutes. So there we have a Uranus uh, encounter and a periapsis of 11,000 kilometers, but the contract I think requires 20,000 kilometers, so we have to be pretty close there as well. So that is the trick. Okay, okay, okay. Let's stop there. Well, uh, there's a Uranus encounter, but it's nowhere near where we want it to be. Uh, Jupiter periapsis exists. At least uh, it's not suborbital. I mean, not just suborbital. At least it's not crashing into Jupiter. So it's a thing. And so we'll just put a node inside Jupiter's SOI and we'll call it a day on that since we've got that Uranus encounter and probably right there would be an okay place to do uh, adjustment. Okay, so we will pay attention to that in two years and 308 days, just under three years. Okay, so now on to MAPSAT 2A which will attempt to make orbit around Jupiter and hopefully, maybe we can aim it at Io, which is a tough one to get into orbit around. But we'll see if we've got enough fuel for that. Alright, this should be our final Voyager window mission. Our final mission for now to the outer planets. I think we should probably wait until all the other missions are, well, further along. I mean, I think probably in the next uh, year we should launch another Jupiter mission, you know, after we get to the next window on that. And we'll look into that. I'm thinking of like fulfilling that one contract that requires us to get into a tight orbit around Jupiter, but I'm assuming that that's going to require a Nerva. It'd be a good thing to test a Nerva out on, and we've got a fair store of funds available to us now, so maybe that's a thing we should do. So thinking about that, but for now, this is the last one. 
and look at all the missions that we're gonna have to take care of look at all those well it's a good thing uh, at least most of them worked out fine yep all right so with that SAS on throttle is up 16 engines that's a good distance ignition and launch We have a fair number of vehicles in inventory here. Some of them are are obsolete. Some I just haven't really thought of whether we should launch them or not because they're a big commitment like Mars class vessels, the moon trucker. Of course we have our resupply missions in storage, plenty of those. Hmm, what was that exclamation mark? Oh, two damage to be reused, okay. Looks like we actually recovered some stages. That's interesting. I'm... Oh, we've got loss of uh, thrust or performance in one engine. That's why our prograde vector is off to the side there. That's not great. Um, standard protocol with this rocket when we've lost an engine like that is to ignite the core. So I'm going to do that. I mean, the J2s aren't at their optimal height yet, but they're getting there. It's not horrible. Gonna throttle down to give me some more time to shut off this tank. Okay, off and separation. Yep, that booster has a little bit more in it now. Alright, throttle up. Okay, we are in space. I'll risk a fairing separation at this point, even though we've got the long body here. At least it's not wider than the fairings. Okay, all good. Okay, core stage complete. Separation. And addition. Okay, making orbit and shutdown. 235 by 172. And 6,884 meters per second left in this stage. Let me just get MechJeb on this subject. How much does it think it'll cost to get to Jupiter? Last time it plied almost 8,000. But Transfer Window Planner says it doesn't need to be that way. Uh, okay, well, it seems... No, uh, let's see. ASAP. Uh, 8,163. Okay, so why don't they agree? Maybe it's because of the insertion? Well, no. I think it's because it doesn't extend far up enough here. Alright, well, my plot isn't too much better. I got 7,800. I think the difference is that Transfer Window Planner is not putting us level with the moons of Jupiter, whereas the estimate from MechJeb as well as my own plot was in line with the moons of Jupiter, so I think that's the difference. Not sure though. But anyway, let's time warp and do this. I've already got the antennae tuned. And let's just go with ignition here. Okay, this stage is done, and let's do that, and separation, and our little Estes engines, oh, not Estes, Asterisk engines are ignited. Long time since I used the Estes engine. I guess I might as well extend the antennae here, though this is probably going to end up space junk somewhere. Might be in orbit around Jupiter, actually. It could probably make orbit around Jupiter. Okay, we are within one meter per second of that. Let's see what we've got. Okay, a little bit distant from Jupiter right there. And high. Let's see, which way are we going? Okay. This gets us closer. 
but will probably have more inclination with respect to Io than I would have liked. Okay, well, I think a mid-course adjustment is called for. I don't know if it's going to let me click my orbit, though. Will it? Um, apparently not. Uh, why don't we just follow this mission out? I mean, we don't have anything urgent to do. We do have to resupply the station in 13 days, but I think I can wait uh, one day for Earth escape here so that we can manage this mission properly. And here I time warp so that I could get out of Earth SOI so I can make a maneuver node, and it still won't let me make a maneuver node. Uh, let's see, maybe this could help? Oh, great. And set our maneuver inside the Jupiter encounter. Well, then there must be a possibility to do it out here then. It would have been nicer if we could have plotted it out, but we couldn't. It wasn't letting me make a node. So this will have to do, and then let's bring it closer in, which should just be a prograde burn. Okay, that is probably close enough. 19,000 kilometers. And let's see how all the plotting goes. And actually our ascending node is right there. So it'll take 530 to capture, 253 to lift our orbit up to Io's orbit. Um, let's flatten it out over here. Okay, we have an encounter. How much did that cost? 6,000. Okay, well, maybe we can't do Io. Maybe this will head over and scan Europa instead. We'll see. Anyway, let's leave that plot there. And I'm going to add the first of those maneuver nodes. Okay. Which actually should be at Jupiter periapsis. So that's pretty, that's pretty important. We better get there in time. All right, so this is headed into the Jupiter system, and we'll see what we can do with it after that. All right, so that leaves the station resupply mission as our final absolute duty, and let's get to it. All right, time for our spaceport resupply mission. SAS is on, thrall is up, and ignition. launch. Ooh, this is the highest TWR we've seen today. For a while, actually. A lot of the bigger rockets, they have uh, lower TWR, after all. This thing's got a lot of vigor. Okay, well, I don't remember exactly where we were supposed to ignite the core on this particular rocket, but now's as good a time as any. It's a J2 core, so better start now. Otherwise, its thrust weight ratio will be sort of the complete opposite of what we've seen so far. Okay, the boosters are out, set. And they are successfully off. Good times. Actually, we probably have too much time to apoapsis now. I overdid it. But that's alright, the spaceport is at 400 kilometers, so we've got plenty of spare room to get into a catch-up orbit. Okay, well, we might as well dump the fairing here. I think it should be safe enough. Okay, let's try that again. Alright. Okay, here we go try and cancel out some more of our inclination but shut down 334 uh, I should have shut down a little bit earlier 334 by 247 and still uh, quite a bit of fuel in this stage actually or not oh no it's right at the bottom here all right uh, okay well anyway it's just going to have to go yep separation 
I wonder if it has enough uh, power. Does it have any power to... Yeah, it does have some electric charge. Maybe we can restart the... But we can't turn it around, can we? Hmm. We'll have to see. I would like to have it deorbit itself. But let's get our payload situated first. Right. Now, what can we do with this guy? Hmm. No real engines to, to deorbit. I don't know if we can flip around in four seconds. Is it tending towards a particular direction right now? Yeah, it'll automatically turn to retrograde soon. But will the fuel be... Uh, it's already unstable. Yeah, forget it, forget it. We'll just uh, have to delete it the, the cheaty way. Alright, let me make a maneuver to rendezvous with the station. Okay, we're approaching now. Distance to target uh, about 600 meters. We need to kill off 11 meters per second so that, you know, we don't fly right past. And then we'll look for a docking port that's available. Of course, this is uh, docking port agnostic, so it can take, uh, it can dock at the propellant only docking port as well as the Apollo docking system as well. Okay, we've chosen a propellant-only docking port that's on top of the station right there. And so we're maneuvering towards it. Let's retract the solar panels now. We've got plenty of electric charge to work with. At some point, I need to send up a KIS container with some, like, drills or something. Maybe remove those uh, solar panels, pack them away somewhere kind of thing. I don't want to like destruct them, but we could remove them. Maybe even send them back down to uh, reclaim some funds. I don't know, not maybe not that module, but I think uh, on the original Spaceport 1 module we need to remove some stuff. But that's further plans. It's looking a bit stuttery for some reason. This is the first time I've seen it like this. I mean, just uh, it just physically looks like it's stuttering. Okay, approaching the docking port now. We're about 11 meters away, it says. Okay, and we're docked. All right new resupply vessel and uh, well now it has wow that that was quite a resupply uh, almost two years of, of uh, food and oxygen and apparently we have six years of water uh, I think that's because some fuel cell must be running yep uh, so we're, we're we really don't need to send up much water anymore but yep everything seems to be good so we can proceed with our future plans if you have some thoughts about that, feel free to tell me in the comments. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.